Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Cafe Bidlows. And uh, I think my runner's brain has finally uh, went away. You know what cures runner's brain? More coffee. running. Oh, more running. <laughs> I just said coffee, but we don't have any tonight. <laughs> Man, I ain't, I ain't drinking this stuff. No. Well, I learned my lesson. Uh, you burnt your lip. Yeah, I learned my lesson. <laughs> All right, so we are uh, now talking about Jesus in the synagogue uh and uh the first first thing we're going to talk about is um the word amazement have you ever been amazed in other words for amazed could be uh in awe bewildered confused perplexed uh stunner uh, shock, stupefied, stupefied, super cali fragilistic ex notions. I think that's more than being amazed. It's amazement. It's just an amazement just, just to say, to say it directly. It. Yeah. <laughs> now try to sing the rest of the song. <laughs> well, you know, the, the when Jesus is in the synagogue and he's teaching, we're going to read about that here in just a moment. And uh, it try to try to picture yourself there, and you're listening to this man, and we're going to explore why it was like that uh, with those in the synagogue. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 1, and we're just going to read verses 21 and 22. <clears throat> they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and began to teach. They were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So they were amazed at his teaching. So you have a rabbi, and that's was Jesus was called a rabbi. They were amazed at this. But why? Well, he taught as one with authority and not as a scribe. Well, we're going to find out, well, what is he talking about? What you know, so that's what we're going to explore here. Uh, a literal trans translation from the Greek. Uh, of amazement, uh, fun fact, uh, they could, uh, uh, struck out of their senses, or astounded, or overwhelmed. Jesus' teaching made a deep impression on them. They were in awe because Jesus had not received formal rabbi training. That's good, that's a good <laughs> He was a carpenter. <laughs> I mean, he grew up in Nazareth. He was a carpenter. Nazareth of Galilee. He was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> uh -huh. But he's a carpenter. All right. So the fact that he, he didn't have any formal rabbinical training. All right, but there's another. I'm going to say that there word. Was, <laughs> there's another fun fact about that. And that is... Even more unusual for an individual to excel at it. Right. Yeah, he was untrained. And he excelled at it. Have you ever heard a preacher preach for the first time and just like, that's the first time they ever did that? <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Can we do it again? <laughs> yeah. So, um, it just, he spoke with power. Uh, before continuing, on with the lesson, we must ask one question. Who were the scribes? Yeah, who were the scribes? We, we hear about these guys all the time. And who were they? I mean, when, when the Jews were carried off in captivity, um, the scribes actually arose during the Old Testament period because they needed to make copies of the scripture. During the period of the exile, their role expanded in becoming interpreters of the law. So they not only copied, but they interpreted the law. By the first century, a scribe was known by terms such as teacher of the law and rabbi. Many were associated with a sect known as the Pharisees. We can read about that in Mark chapter 2, verse 16, Luke chapter 5, verse 30, Acts chapter 23 and verse 9. 
They interpreted the law and developed traditions. And every time I heard that, the Tradition? word traditions, I think of Fiddler <laughs> on the Roof and Topo singing that song. Uh, um, they taught students the law and presided over judicial matters, which would mean they were probably a part of the sect of the Pharisees. And that sect, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees made up the governing body of the Jews, which would be the Sanhedrin. The, uh, those living in Jerusalem, those scribes, um, were a little bit more, uh, they had more power than they did in, in uh, Galilee. In Mark's gospel, they were more antagonistic uh, towards Jesus. So we see a tradition, they, they started out doing you know, the right thing, copying the scriptures for, for future generations. But then it got away from them, they started developing, we're gonna do this even our way, we're gonna improve it. So, um, Eric's gonna contrast some teaching methods between why they were so amazed uh, between, between Jesus, his teaching, and the way the scribes taught. And uh, before I do that, I want to give special thanks to William Hendrickson that, uh, uh, with uh, what uh, he had discovered when he was uh, when he was looking into this stuff and gave us some ideas here. Uh, Jesus teaching methods versus the methods of the scribes. Jesus spoke the truth. The scribes were corrupt and evasive. Jesus presented matters of great importance. Scribes were often trivial. Yeah, they 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 actually um, uh, just to kind of reiterate, um, Jesus said something about um, something about a gnat, you know, uh, the hairs of a gnat or whatever, uh, straining, and uh, they were so much, you know. Every mark, every every small mark of the law they wanted to keep, but they added their own traditions, and that's where Jesus and the scribes and the Pharisees had their had their uh, disagreement. Um, Jesus was sy systematic. The scribes tended to ramble. That's I tell you what, you know, there's a reason. Uh, Anytime I would, uh, anytime I would do a sermon or something, I have to write everything down, word for word, how I'm going to say it, or I'm just going to ramble on, and half it's not going to make any sense. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever had a, a, a boss or a supervisor? They'll come in, they're going to have a meeting, and they go on and on and on and on, and then they get to the point, but it takes them five or ten minutes to get to a point that could have been done in three or four. I could have been home by now. Yeah. <laughs> so the scribes tend to do that as well. So that's nothing new. Right. Uh, excited the crowd's curiosity with his illustrations, and scribes' present, uh, presentations were often dull. Uh, he spoke of love. The scribes often spoke from impure motives. He spoke from the Father's authority, and scribes spoke from their own authority, and, or other imperfect men. Jesus' instruction was were inspired by the Holy Spirit. He spoke words that were given to him by his Father. And we see that in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 21, and John verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 49. He did not borrow from other rabbis. That's kind of like what we're doing because with the research that we've done for this, for these uh, episodes, some of these episodes, was the work of, like I had mentioned uh, last time, was the work on a commentary by David Stewart. And he's done a lot of historical investigating. Sometimes we can find facts on the internet and we're just sharing with you what we have learned in our research. However, Jesus, he had a direct line. He had the Holy Spirit, whereas the scribes and the Pharisees, they were speaking off of who they were following, and it definitely wasn't Jesus. It wasn't God the Father. They were following the law and the traditions that they hooked up to the law. He uh, contrasted rabbi teaching with his own definitive teaching. But I say to you, 
which we see in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 and 22, and 43 and 44. Okay. Let me interrupt you again there. He says, and this was the Sermon on the Mount, and, and it, the way he says it, he says, it has been said, such and such, but then he says, but I say to you, um, and that, that is, you know, he's actually drawing them in to that because you don't pay any attention to that. You pay attention to what I'm telling you, okay? He told stories, uh, parables, uh, to convey simple truths, which captured the attention of his audiences, and sometimes his teaching was confirmed with a miracle, and it heightened the, heightened the amazement of the crowd. Um, and in saying that, that it kind of ends... This part of it. This part. <laughs> and coming... Up next is confrontation in the synagogue. How scandalous. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye.